Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to look at applying the concepts in our previous video where we actually built our pre people screen and now we use that when we actually want to build our detailed person UI so the first thing that we're going to need to do in this video is actually just build our screen so let's actually just create a new view called detail view so this new view we actually want this to live within our detail folder so let's just dis dismiss this to make it easier to see so within our detail folder, let's create a new view in here called detail view. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to look at our mockups. And if you actually look at what we need to build for our detail view in our mockups, you'll see that we actually have this design where we have a navigation title and we also have our view set up vertically and this is probably going to be scrollable. Now, we actually don't need to use a list in this case because we've only got three views and it's not like it's really like a repeatable list of items. So instead, what we can do is simply just use a V stack because this is just static content that isn't really, you know, dynamic or gonna change based on like a list like this, for example. So let's go back into our SwiftUI project. What we're going to do is create a Z stack which has a background and a scroll view within it. So first of all, let's just embed this within a Z stack. And then we're going to create a computer property for our background, similar to what we did before. And then we're just going to add in our background. And then underneath here, we're just going to add in our scroll view like so. Cool. And let's just run this on our switch wire preview. And you'll see that that looks good, like what it is that we want, which is great. So if you actually look at our mock-up, you'll notice that we actually have this image, but we're actually going to look at dealing with this last because we want to actually add this in when we actually hook up our UI to our data in the next video. So in this video, we're just going to focus on just adding in these two sections here for now because it's just static content we can easily add in. So the first thing we're going to add in is a V stack in our scroll view. So let's just add in a V stack. So we just got our V stack and we just got the alignment of leading because we want everything within it to be aligned to the left hand side. And I've added spacing of 18 because I know the designs between each item in the V stack, there's 18 spacing. So looking at our mockups, let's actually look at the building, building out the blocks for our user in our body so we can actually just preview it. And then once we actually just add that in, we'll then refactor it out to make it more readable like we did in our previous video. So we're actually going to need another V stack to actually lay out each item with some spacing and leading to position it to the left. So let's actually do this now. So within this V stack, we're going to have another one. So now within this V stack, we actually have eight spacing. So this V stack that we're going to be building is this view here. So the first thing in this view that you'll notice that we actually have is our pill view. So let's just reuse our pill view component and add it within this V stack. So within here, we just want to say pill view. And then we just want to pass in a dummy ID for now. Okay, sweet. So this looks good. So now that we actually have a pill in here within this group, so now that we have our pill view within this view, the next thing we want to do is actually add in our user's information. So we want to add in the first name and last name like in our designs, and we want to add in a separator. So I'm just going to add this in and then we'll break it down. So now we have our first name here, you can see the text, and then we have our placeholder, and then we just simply have a divider, which is what we're going to use to help us separate out our content. So now what we need to do is actually repeat this for our last name and our email. So let's just copy this. And then rather than just being first, it'll just be last name. And then for our final section, if you look at our design, you'll see that we actually don't have a divider on the bottom. So we only need to copy, we just need to copy these two here. And let's paste it below. So rather than just being last name, we're just going to change this to be email and then we're just going to change this to say email here as well cool so this is all looking good so now look at the body of our view this would actually be a good time to actually refactor it because we now know that this matches our design so let's actually look at refactoring this out into some components within this view so it just becomes a lot more readable so within our view what we're going to do is actually use our private extension to add in each one of these sections so let's actually just scroll down. And rather than grouping it within here, what I'm just going to do is just create a new private extension. So this private extension is what we're going to use to just literally group this entire component because it's quite a big one. So we're just going to create a new 
property here called first name. And we're just going to copy this here, like so. Or cut it and then paste it like so. Cool. So when you actually do this, you'll notice that you actually have an issue. And the problem is, is because we said here that we want to return some kind of view. So it's actually expecting one type of view. But if you notice, we actually have a text view and we also have a divided view as well. So it's actually not too sure what view we're trying to return. Now in order to actually fix this, all we need to do is just mark this with the at view, view, with the at view builder property wrapper. So what the at view builder property wrapper will allow us to do is essentially say that you could return one or more kind of views. So now we need to copy the same thing that we did here for our email and our last name. So let's just do that now. So I'm just gonna simply just copy this and then we'll paste it. And then rather than this being first name, it's gonna be last name. And then we're just going to copy this, put it in there. And then we're just gonna do the same thing for email. So now we're able to actually easily just add all of these like, you know, content sections within our VStack. So let's just do that now. So let's just add in first name, last name, and then email. And then we'll just do a bit of cleanup. And then we're just going to remove any extra dead space that we just don't really need. So that can all go. Right, cool, sweet. So now you can see just by looking at this, this is a lot more easier to read and understand what's going on. But if you actually look at our design, you notice that we actually have different colors based on the scheme of the user's device. So what we can actually do is apply a foreground color using our text theme onto the text views. Now, one thing that I do want to avoid is I actually don't want to have to go into every single one of these and apply dot foreground, dot foreground, dot foreground. So a nice way to handle this is to actually use a view called a group and apply the style onto the group. Now by using a group, what that will actually do is it'll actually help us automatically apply the styles individually onto each view. So let's just actually just type out group. And then we want to put that in here. And then within this group, we want to set a foreground color of theme.text. Like so. And now you'll see the text here looks, you know, fine. But if you actually run this in dark mode, you'll now see that it also picks up the color that we defined in our assets folder. So this is great. So let's just remove that. And now we've done that. So one thing to note, if you actually look at our designs is we're actually missing this like rounded rectangle box around it. And also there's some padding within this box, well within this actual view as well. So what we want to do is on the actual VStack that holds the entire view, so this VStack here, we actually want to apply some styles onto it to help it match the mock-up designs. So let's just add this in now. So now you'll see that we're just adding the padding horizontally and vertically within this view. And we're also setting the background to the color and also applying a rounded rectangle onto it as well. So you'll also notice that it's a bit tight to the left hand side of the screen and in order to fix this all we need to do is just simply just apply some padding onto the v stack that holds everything so this v stack here so after this let's just say dot padding and you should see that it will push it out and it starts to look more like our design which is great so let's actually just improve this a bit more. And instead of just having this entire view within here, we're now going to extract this view out into its own component. So we're going to group it with these views that relate to it as well. So we're going to create another view in here or computer property, I should say. I'm just going to call it general. So now we need to use this general within our VStack here, like so. Cool. 
So I'm hoping that you're starting to see a bit of a pattern here in terms of the way that, you know, I like to work is that I'll add in the views and then I'll extract it out to make it a bit more cleaner and readable for us when we're looking at the view. So now we have the context that this is the general section that you're looking at. Okay, cool. Now, if you actually look at our designs, we also have a link here at the bottom and you can actually tap on this link to open up a link to the API that we're using within this video. Now, let's actually add in a link using the link view. And I actually covered this in my video, opening up links in SwiftUI within the SwiftUI session playlist. So if you actually look at the symbols that we actually need, we actually need to add in a symbol for this link because we don't actually have it at the moment. So let's go into our symbols file. So we just do command shift and then O on your keyboard. You should be able to search for files within your project. So let's look at the symbols file. And then what in here, we're going to add in a new symbol for our link. Cool. So now we're able to actually match our design. So let's just go back in to our detail view. And within here, we're now just going to start to write out the logic to basically help us build this out. So we're going to use a link view. So let's just type this out now. So I'm just going to type out link and then we're going to use the destination and label. So for the destination for now, I'm just going to hard code it to be some URL. So the URL we're going to use is the request URL that I actually have a copy of here. Cool. And then for our label, this is going to be the view that is basically wrapped around this is the view. This is going to be the view that lives within the link. So this link is going to wrap around this view. So within here, if you look at our designs, what we actually need is we need to have a H stack because we want to lay out this view here to the left and this view to the right. And within that H stack, we're going to also need a V stack as well. So before we do that, we need to just force and wrap this. Okay, cool. So now we have our link with our content within it. So the content within the link almost acts as if a hate stack. So now what's gonna happen is we've got a V stack that just vertically lays out our text and we just have our link on the right hand side. Now it's worth noting that this actually matches the same design as this view here. Now one thing I don't wanna do is have to copy the exact same styles that I applied onto the general, like I did here with the padding and the background color, again onto the actual link view itself. So rather than just having to repeat ourselves like so, what we're going to do instead is to simply use a similar technique where we use a group and we apply the style onto the actual group itself. So each one of its children get the same styles applied onto it. So what we're going to do is just move out this link into its own computer property since we now know it looks fine. So we'll just leave this general in here because it's all grouped within the first name and instead we'll just create it within here. So we're just going to say var and then link some view. And then we're just going to copy this link view within this computer property here like so. And then we're going to now put our link and general within a group. Okay, cool. So what we want to do, if we just resume this, you'll see that it all looks fine. What we want to do is we actually want to copy, so we want to cut these styles here that we apply specifically onto our general. So let's just cut this. And instead, we now want to apply that onto the actual group that holds both of them. So we just put that on the end of the group here like so. And now you'll see that both of them pick up the exact same style. So we don't really need to repeat ourselves. So we're able to hit two birds with one stone. So now if you actually look at this and compare it to the designs in a mock-up, you'll see that it actually looks quite similar to our design, which is great. Okay, cool. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.